TNT Trende La Mina is a Gerslauer family coaster at Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This ride offers a smattering of forces and some theming, making it Madrid's best family coaster. I'll explain why in this review. There are two large theme parks in Spain's capital city, Parque Warner Madrid and Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. The latter received seven different roller coasters between 1999 and 2012, with the last of the bunch being a Gerslauer family coaster named TNT Tren de la Mina. This rise an interesting appearance. It is part of the park's Naturaleza zone. The lead car looks like a train, and a few turns pass through rocky caverns. These look nice, but they are small. This ride was supposed to have even better theming. Per the initial rendering, it would have wound around these large hills and even passed a waterfall. I'm guessing this was scaled back for budgetary reasons. The layout was also adjusted from the original rendering. The original rendering showed the S-bends occurring immediately after the upwards helix. Then after the far turnaround, the coaster would have a few bunny hills on the way back to the final brake run. The layout ultimately feels similar, but the order was swapped. In the actual ride, the bunny hills were placed after the upwards helix. Then the S-bends were placed at the very end of the ride. While the theming was scaled back fairly significantly, the theming in place still looks good for a park of this scale, and it definitely adds to the experience. Then the track is a mundane brown. This makes sense thematically in addition to the aforementioned visuals. But to access this ride, you enter through a castle. Thematically, this doesn't really tie in. This was a pre-existing structure, and it looks nice, so I'm glad they kept it around, even if it is a bit weird to pass through for a mine train. Once you enter the castle's gate, you access a plaza with the entrances to both the Fiordo Shoot the Chutes ride and TNT Trend de la Mina. This is because the coaster reuses a large chunk of the queue line for Fiordos that was often unused. So now there's a giant sea of switchbacks side by side serving both rides, and there's a decent chance you'll have to wait for this coaster. It usually has one of the longest waits at the park, often hitting the 30 to 40 minute mark midday. A large reason for that is because of how accommodating this coaster is. Young kids can ride this because riders need to be just 39 inches or 100 centimeters tall. The ride is not too tall or intimidating, as it stands 56 feet or 17 meters tall. So those with milder tastes give it a whirl then it does just enough to appeal to thrill seekers as well. The ride has two trains, but it has run just one in all my visits, and that seems to be a common occurrence. And that train is not super long either, as it seats just a max of 18 riders, as there are 9 rows of 2. The best way to avoid a long wait is to ride towards the very starter end of the day. Alternatively, there is the park's paid speedy pass skip the line system. If you use this, you board from the exit and get first pick of seats. Seating is on a first come basis. The park lets enough people into the station to fill the next train. I've ridden this in the front, middle, and back, and I don't have a strong preference where I sit with this ride. Riders are restrained by an L-shaped lap bar, similar to the other Gerslauer family coasters like Fire Chaser Express at Dollywood. But this ride also features individual seatbelts, these don't hurt the ride experience, but these do slow down loading a bit. Once checked, you turn out of the station and ascend the lift hill. It's pretty fast at the start, but it slows to a crawl at the top. I don't think it's to give you more time to admire the view. Rather, I think it's so the train carries less speed. My rationale is that there's also a trim brake towards the start of the ride, which is something you don't usually see in a coaster of this size. Neither the lift slowdown nor the trim brake were present in the initial POV shared by Parques Reunidos just days after the ride opened. I'm guessing this ride was running wilder than Gerslauer anticipated in the hot summer months. The first drop is fairly mild, but it gives the train a nice head of steam. This leads to an upward spiral offering decent positive Gs. The end of this element has a nice head chopper with the first drop. Then you drop downwards. This is the drop with a trim halfway down it, which saps some speed and prevents any airtime from this drop. You then briefly pass through a rock structure. 
but this won't be the last time. The pullout offers OK positive Gs as well. This immediately leads into a bank turnaround applying even more positive Gs. This is followed by a big S hill. It felt close to giving airtime, but it didn't quite lift me out of my seat. I imagine it would have some negative Gs if the trim didn't hit. There is a good head chopper with a support beam though, as well as solid Gs on the pullout. Next is an upwards helix. It has good force to it, and it pierces through another rocky tunnel. You exit the helix by dropping downwards, which offers some decent floater airtime in the rear rows. It's the best bit of airtime anywhere on the ride. Then comes a bunny hill. It goes through another tunnel at the start. This offers airtime for everyone. It's okay floater in the front and weak lift in the back. The dip out of it transitions into a 180 degree turn with nice positive G's. Then the coaster finishes with some S bends. The first one is solid force and it also takes place in yet another tunnel. The last few don't have any power to them, but you do have a fun visual slaloming past some supports. You then hit the brakes and return to the station, ending the 1,476 foot or 450 meter long experience. Despite what looks like a short overall track length, I feel like this ride is a satisfactory length for a family coaster. Some Gerslauers can be rattly, but this one is very smooth. The company's family coasters tend to fare better than their larger thrill coasters. So what would I rate TNT Trend de la Mina? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. This is a good family coaster. Nearly every turn offers nice positive G's for a ride like this. I prefer some of Gerslauer's newer family coasters because those ones tend to offer more dynamic layouts and a bit more airtime, but this is still a good ride. And as I mentioned at the start, it is the best family coaster in all of Madrid. Cora Camimos Bip Bip at Parque Warner Madrid is a solid installation, but it doesn't have the thematic elements, nor does it have positive Gs in every turn like TNT Trend de la Mina. Gerslauer really does a great job with family coasters, and I would love to see more built across the world. They would be welcome additions to nearly any theme park out there, between their dynamic layouts and accessibility. So those are my thoughts on TNT Tren de la Mina at Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Do you agree it's the best family coaster in Madrid? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.